So this video is a few examples of how brake traction control works with cross axle differential locks in the front and the rear. Now if you're not sure what brake traction control is, I do have another video on that. And also note that all of the driving here is for demonstration purposes, not ideal perfect four wheel driving. So the Y62 Patrol is being driven slowly and it's going to get stuck at this point over here. Both rear wheels are spinning uselessly in the mud. The front left doesn't have much traction, doesn't have much weight in it, so it's up to the front right wheel to drag the car out. And what you'll see happen is that the brake traction control will start to turn that right wheel as you can see it now, and that's enough to drag the car out by the front right wheel alone, and the vehicle makes it. So here's the climb again, but from the back. Take a look at the rear left wheel. You can see that it's always spinning the same speed as the rear right, um, indicative of the rear locker being engaged. And again, this is for demonstration purposes. Ideally, we'd have taken it slightly quicker so as not to come to a stop. Now we've got a Suzuki Jimny. Now standard, the Suzuki doesn't have the option for cross-axle differential locks, but this one has aftermarket versions from ARB installed. The rear only is in, and you'll be able to see there, the car has come to a halt, driver apply the follow and see that the back slides out a bit, which is typical with a rear cross-axle lock, or compare that with the uh, twin-locked version in a moment. Now, the car's gonna come to a halt here, and similar to the Patrol, the back axle is just spinning but as the driver increases the throttle then the brake traction control will come and start to be more effective on the right front wheel and then that's enough just to pull the car forwards and there you go. So here's the Suzuki again and it's going to have both cross axle lockers front and rear engaged. Now this time you will see that as it goes over this bump and stops the back end doesn't slide out because the front end is able to pull it forwards and that's a good reason to use twin cross axle lockers. However when you do use both lockers you significantly reduce your ability to steer which is why it's sometimes good to have the rear only and brake traction control. Now here we're going to see uh, Ford Everest use its factory rear locker and attempt to climb a hill. Watch for the vehicle to lose traction and then you will see the front left wheel spin and the rear front right um, won't be getting any traction despite the fact that on this vehicle brake traction control should in fact be working on the front axle, it's just not that effective. If brake traction control could manage to get torque to that right front wheel, the vehicle could move forwards. Now we've got the front aftermarket locker engaged and it's going to be the same climb and then just look at the difference. Up with no problem at all. Now on the same hill, this is a Toyota Prado. It's got the centre diff locked engaged as you always should off road. Rear cross axle locker on, but the front axle has brake traction control working on it and you'll see the difference that makes. Take a look at the front wheel. So you can see here that front right wheel, it's, it's braked. That now is sending torque over to the front left wheel and the car can continue. And then if you look here on the right, you can see that front right wheel actually gets some torque to it. Now it's got weight on it and the car continues up. So that's how it ascends the hill. Now we've got a Mitsubishi Triton, which has a rear cross axle locker, which is currently engaged. That disables brake traction control on the front axle. Then we're going to disable the rear cross axle locker, which will engage brake traction control on all four wheels. And you'll be able to see the difference. Okay, increase the revs a bit. Yeah, so what we see there is uh, the locker working, no problem at all there, but traction control is not working on the front axle, so we're not going anywhere, more revs is not really going to make any difference at all. Okay, now, um, disconnect the rear locker, so we've got traction control back operating again. Okay, and drive forwards now, once the rear locker's out. Bring up the revs. Uh, you did disconnect the rear locker? I have, but it's 
still blinking. I think I need to go back to let it come uh, go off completely. Yeah, go back a meter or so. Should see the ASC light off. Yeah, that, on that the probably dirt. Now just come forward slowly. We'll get to exactly that same point again. Locker still blinking though. Yeah, if it's, it's coming out, it should be out now. All right, that's good. Okay. No, it's still. Go back. It's still not out. Yeah, I know. It's still blinking. All right, keep going back then. Out now. Okay. Forward with fraction of left hand down. So back on the same line, slowly, real slow, real slow. That's it, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, great. All right, let's see if traction control can beat the locker, go. More, more red. Keep going. Keep going. So to summarise, for vehicles with a factory standard rear locker, ideally you want brake traction control working on the front axle so that you've got an extra bit of traction and also it's really good to have brake traction control work on the front axle and the rear locker in because that way you can steer, it's really hard to steer with the front locker in. A rear locker can also slew the back end around which is generally why you use front and rear at the same time if you have both. Now remember sometimes brake traction control needs a little bit of revs to wake up, especially in older systems, and sometimes it's desensitised when the rear locker is in. Sometimes also brake traction control on all four wheels is more effective than having a locker only on the rear axle and nothing on the front axle, so no brake traction control. So lockers are not necessarily magic buttons which get you out of trouble. And remember that as brake traction control works on monitoring wheel speed differences between two wheels on an axle, it will never activate when a cross axle locker is engaged. So if you add an aftermarket locker to your vehicle on one axle, you will get brake traction control on the other axle. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments and thanks for watching.